tonight. Well, Debbie Connolly is an animal behaviourist from Safe Pets. She joins me now. Very good afternoon to you, Debbie. Let, let's start, first of all, with these uh, 300 dogs uh, that this unit says it's going to have to put down this year. People are going to be saying, isn't there another way? It does seem an extreme number, doesn't it? Um, it's important to understand, though, how seizures happen. I think people are assuming 300 dogs is 300 dogs who've already done something wrong, and that's not actually the case. The breeds that are illegal in this country can be defined simply by look or what we call type. So you're a particular measurement, you're considered to be an illegal breed. So a great many of the dogs that are seized, sadly, yes, some belong to the criminal fraternity, they've been encouraged and trained to be aggressive, but a lot of these are family pets and there are significant numbers who end up as stray dogs and because the law doesn't allow for these animals to be passed on, regardless of how lovely and fantastic their temperaments are, if the owner doesn't come forward, they simply die. So what's your view about the Act? Is it um, badly framed? I think to some extent, yes. We need protection from the people who actually encourage their dogs to be aggressive and cause problems. And we've seen the stats. There are increases year on year on dog bite numbers. And the hospital statistics bear that out as well. So something is definitely going wrong somewhere. But the truth is, if we took every illegal breed off the street today, tomorrow it would be something else. Because the sort of people who encourage their dogs to behave like this would simply move on to another breed. And what about, I mean, on the behavioural side of it, what about uh, the dogs that are legal but have uh, still been trained to do some pretty awful things? When they're seized, what, what happens to them? Is there a chance of a reprieve for them? It depends on whether the owner is claiming them or whether the owner is a fit and proper person. So, yes, people like me who act as court expert witnesses do assessments on dogs like this and we help to determine whether or not the temperament of the dog is something that is safe with the public. Now, in some cases, yes, retraining would indeed solve any problems, but we're left with legislation that means that if the owner is not a fit and proper person, even if the dog can be retrained, the dog will still die because if the person's not fit and proper, there's no ownership of the dog. And it keeps coming back to uh, the uh, fit and proper person or not. Yes. Um, it's never really then the dog's fault, whether it's a crossbreed or whatever. Well, is it the dog's fault? Everybody thinks not. There's considerable legislation and I'm currently campaigning to change the way that dog bites are actually um, investigated because I think there's something significantly missing in that. So are the dogs to blame? Everybody in the dog world thinks not. But as long as people are allowed and encouraged to breed indiscriminately and train dogs to be like this and simply don't care, and if you remove one, they'll get another one, we are in trouble in this country. Yeah. Well, well, tell us more about that, uh, Debbie, what you're campaigning for. It sounds intriguing. What, to become more severe, less severe, or just different well, when you treat these dog bites? Well, d different to a point. I mean, I've been petitioning um, Def Minister George Eustace, um, who believes in a reply recently to me that the fact that the coroner can identify by aggravating factors in fatalities and serious injuries is sufficient. I don't believe it is. It is understandable that when there's a fatality or a serious injury, the dogs are put to sleep reasonably quickly. But my campaign and my petition is to do with trying to keep those dogs alive long enough to at least assess them. Having people guess why a dog has killed someone is not sufficient. We need to know the actual why if we're going to protect people in the future. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about the guessing. Does that um, apply uh, to a certain extent as well in deciding what breed the dog is? Some of them must look pretty like legal breeds and things like that. Well, this is one of the problems. It's important to stress pit bull type. That, that's the best known of the banned breeds. It's not the only one as, as has been discussed today. But pit bull type is, is measurements and statistics and, and ratios. So you can get an, any number of crossbreeds who've never seen a bull breed in their lives. So unfortunately do fit the measurements. And that's the law that we have to work within. Such a complex issue. Thanks for bringing some uh, light and clarity to it, Debbie. Really good talking to you. Debbie Connolly there from uh, Safe Pets.